Someone asked me what's the difference between arrogance and confidence, and honestly, I don't think that there's much. I really think that it is just the evil twin of confidence. It's just the unlikable aspects of somebody who is confident. I really think that you could describe somebody who is confident as arrogant, and you'd both be right. So, there's that. The other thing is, when people describe people as, I don't know, like Sean McCalla for Paul Keating as being arrogant, well, they're the top of their field. They've earned it, haven't they? It's usually more unlikable in somebody that kind of, more of a douchebag element, that guy at a party that's just got that like, hey, what's up, dude? That attitude, fuck him. But that, that arrogant attitude of I'm confident for no reason. But the thing is, confidence is just a mind trick. Confidence definitely just goes to whoever just says that they're confident. And then all of a sudden, because you're just saying that you're confident or that you are acting confident in that situation. As we talked about in a previous video about confidence, how there's situational confidence and then there's core confidence. I think core confidence just, look, you are going to uh, come off as arrogant in a new field that you're endeavoring on if you have core confidence. But I would take that over not having core confidence. If you just walk into any situation being scared, like some shivering little hairless rat, you are not going to be liked. You're not going to be liked if you are arrogant, but at least people will be listening to you and respecting you. And also, you are just kind of, it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. If you are confident when you walk into something, it's hard to diminish that confidence. It's the same thing as when you start out in any field and you're doing anything. If you start out doing comedy, usually you're going to be bad. I mean, you're always going to be bad. You are going to be bad at your craft. No, actually, this is the really trippy thing that usually happens with a lot of skills. Usually what happens when you are learning a skill is, first off, you are pretty good. There's a reason that you started going down the, that path and it's because you're naturally talented at it. Then you learn the rules that apply to it. Same when it comes to music. Didn't know this about music, but apparently there's some maths to it. And... Oh, the more you know. But when you start out in it, you might be actually fairly good. But then you start learning what staccatos are and whatever the fuck knuckle else they talk about in that strange little 1800s art. It's so mysterious to me. I just feel like every music teacher is either going to be some cunt with long hair going, okay, so I'm going to sell a polywoolly doodle. That's awesome, dude. Or it's just going to be Beethoven when you walk in and he's going to have that wig just being like, God needs to go. But... <laughs> what happens in music or in anything else is that you start off fairly good, then you learn the, law, the rules, and then those rules start playing with your head, and then you get worse than where you started off. And then, through time, you start building up, and then you start kind of re recovering that natural talent, and on top of that, you start getting better because you have, like, a structure to work with. And that's usually the journey of every man <laughs> that happens from... It's about a seven year course in everything. Everything takes about seven years to master, apparently. I don't know because I haven't mastered everything on earth. I suppose that's just laziness on my end, but you start getting worse, then you get better, then you get much better. So it kind of becomes this thing of like, you start off unconsciously incompetent, then you become consciously incompetent, then you become consciously competent and then you become unconsciously competent. That's the last level of learning a skill. What I will say about arrogance when it comes to that context is, I think the difference is if you are confident, it comes from this area of like, you know, if I stick to it, I'm going to get better. There is a level of confidence there as opposed to the person that says, I'll never make it, <laughs> and runs out of the room crying. There are people that will just stick to it and understand, okay, I'm not that good at it, but I'm going to get better. Say that you're golfing, for instance, and then there's all these other old people sitting there going, yeah, now that's your drive. And then you try and do it, and then it goes straight into the pool or hits a caddy in the head. And then you can say, I better do that because hitting a caddy in the head is always great. But when you are in that situation and you're trying to think about how to get to the next level, if you sit there and think, I'm not as good as these guys, where's the confidence? There is no confidence there. If you think, what would I have to, like, I would have to believe that I could compete with people that have been golfing for 20 years by doing it my first time. There's a level of confidence in that. Now, arrogance would be kind of just removing yourself from any of those indicators in life. So that you see that you are actually deficient in something but instead of thinking, I'm never going to get better at it, 
You just think, I'm good at it now, and you move up through life. It definitely, sadly, does work. See virtually every Triple J band to have ever existed. They're pretty much all the same. Most of them, and I have no training in music whatsoever, but when I talk to people who do, they just point out all the flaws in their music. They rip most of those fucking bands apart. You know the ones I'm talking about. The ones that you voted for in Triple J's Hottest 100 of the Decade, basically. Most of the time they sit there and they just rip it to shreds and say that this, this is like, you know, just musically wrong. It should have had that harmony to it, all of that kind of stuff. But the thing is, the difference was that that person isn't confident in their abilities. So they look at all these geniuses, they break down what all these geniuses do, and then they just think, I can't get there. They don't have that mentality of one step at a time, pad one. They don't have that. But the other thing is that those Triple J bands, and that's usually why they just go straight down, is because they kind of just randomly hit across one hit, your soldier boy tactic in life. I love how he's had Generations Macarena. For some reason, he just came across a beat that really worked. Even though the song was really poorly produced, you listen back to it now, the mic's peaking. But it was one of the most successful songs of the decade. He was never able to get anywhere close to it, even when he got a bunch of other producers working on him as well, because, you know, like, <laughs> I don't know. It's just, you know, sometimes uh, Haley's Comet goes by the earth, and that was Soldier Boy. And that's the same thing that happens when it comes to musicians. A lot of them are just extremely arrogant, usually creative types. The ones that make it are the ones that just kind of blow ahead in, in front of everybody else. Um, if you look at a lot of actors that have made it, particularly in Australia because it's such a small pond, they're horrible, horrible people, extremely arrogant. They think they have nothing to learn. And then when you look at their acting abilities, you think, I probably could do that. And because it's just like the same thing, maybe 10 years, 20 years of doing the same mistakes over and over again, never thinking that you could learn anything. I think that's the difference between arrogance and confidence. Arrogant people think they're the shit and just by, by pure osmosis of existing. They think they deserve that position. And unfortunately, that is just kind of what happens in life, is that life is a self-fulfilling prophecy. Whatever you think, you become. But the downside of that is, is that they are not actually pushing their art or their craft further. They are just going through the motions and assuming a position that somebody who else is actually skilled could be at, but they don't have any confidence. They might have the skills, but they do not have the confidence. Confidence, I think, at its purest form, is just, if you don't have the skills, knowing that you can acquire those skills, but also having the knowledge or the temperament to understand that, yeah, okay, but I'm not there yet, but one day I will be. Now, there has to become a point where you just think, I'm there, I don't need to keep thinking this, because after a while, that line of thinking becomes detrimental, but when you're starting out on a skill, you definitely need to have that mentality, as opposed to, I'm the shit, because I say I am. <laughs> It's the same thing when you talk to people in Japan and you say, are you good at maths? And all of them say, oh no, terrible, terrible. And then you talk to America like, yeah, dude, I'm as good at maths as, cause I can ask for change, bruh. Yeah. <laughs> so, they think that they're really good at maths. The results show they are not. Japanese people think they're really poor at maths. They're the best in the world. Well, not anymore, but they're still consistently at the top. It's because of that level of confidence. And what you will see, which is a really tragic thing that you see in Koreans and Japanese people all the time, is that they have this mentality of just being whipped into working extremely hard into a field. They get really good at it, but there's something about their culture that psychologically blocks them from taking that next step. It's the exact opposite when it comes to America. Like, okay, if you talk to most musicians, back to the music thing, because I can't be asked to think of any other examples, but K-pop, if you listen to it, is a lot better structured. Their pop music is better and more complicated than the vast majority of top 40 Western music. And it is because at a young age, they kind of just put them into a school. They train them like little monkeys and keep whipping them to make the little K-pop dances. So they're all just, I don't know, 70,000 Michael Jacksons. Why, why is there so many people in each of their singing groups? I, I don't know. Is it the harmony? No, there's something about money. I can't remember, but we'll talk about that. No, we won't talk about that another time. I just can't be asked to do it. 
You can look it up in your own time if you're interested. But then, when it comes to America, usually what happens is they've just kind of put, first of all, also, it's just a bloated industry, so you can do that there. But it's also just that level of arrogance of just like, I deserve it because I exist, and then they move there. Those two differences in life kind of need to be balanced. And I think that the way that it is balanced is the good twin side of arrogance, which is just confidence, which is this sturdiness in yourself, this acceptance of yourself of where you are and your ambitions of where you are going and being fine with those ambitions and being fine with where you are, but having a realistic picture of it. Arrogance is a form of delusion in a lot of ways. Now, when people say that about Sean McAuliffe or Paul Keating, I just don't think that that's the case. When people say they're arrogant, actually what they're doing is they're just reflecting their view of them on themselves because they go, he was mean to me personally. I hate that. I hate how there's so many shit cunts in the world that have this attitude of, you should make the world work at my level. But that seems to be what everybody's saying when they say that those two people are arrogant. No, it's just that they're so good at their craft that when somebody comes up and is like, I've got a suggestion for you, Sean McAuliffe, you should... Um, just put a beard on your Matthias Corman character because beards are funny. And you could imagine a lot of people in the advertising world doing that because they are people that wish that they were Sean McAuliffe, but aren't. And so, ooh, them's the breaks. Maybe you shouldn't have spent your entire life sitting there pitching, oh yeah, for this, this uh, cereal, we're just going to put a unicorn in it. That's pretty unique, am I right? That's the thing that I always see when I see advertisers. It's just like, you think you're creative. You're the most unoriginal cunt on earth. Sorry. Anyway, <laughs> but, but they would suggest something like that to Sean McAuliffe and he kind of just shut them down. That's why you hear that level of arrogance that comes from him or maybe Paul Keating. Again, I, I don't know these two people. This is just from secondhand experience what I've heard. It's just because they're at a completely different level. So they hear that and they just shut it down. They just can't even be bothered with it. They've, they, they've got to focus on their craft so much. And that's the other thing that you learn when you get to those elite levels in anything. Not that I regard myself as being an elite level at anything, but I believe that I am a lot better off than where I started, right? But, you know, when somebody who's down there says to you, you should be doing this, you have this very dismissive attitude of just fuck off, you have nothing to share with me. And I can say from Otto's experience, they don't. Somebody who has been doing something for six months cannot tell somebody who's been doing something for six years what to do. They're just not on the level. So, I think that that is just that they have like a supreme level of confidence. But the thing is that if somebody is at their level, there is a lot of people within the Labour Party that will always say that, no, Paul Keating was uh, very conciliatory to the rest of us and was always listening to our suggestions and ideas. Why? Because those people were at his level. They were part of a very successful government that had been working for a long time and they're experts in their field. So, Paul Keating would listen to them. But you know, when the Liberal Party just came up, usually because they're just bums to begin with, and they would always dismiss him as being arrogant. But if you listen to people from the Labour Party's perspective, they will, they will perceive him as being confident. So there is some level there of just, if you like the person or not, you will describe them as being either confident or arrogant. But if you're gonna just take any distinction away from it, arrogant people do not want to learn. Arrogant people have deluded themselves into thinking that they are this supreme entity that has nothing of any, any fallibility whatsoever. But people who are confident think that there's always something to learn. They're just good at their skill. And they just have this inner confidence that if they're not good at their skill, they will be good at their skill. All right. <clears throat> um, give me more questions. Like the video.